Well, hello, everybody. Today's video is going to be kind of podcast style while I paint and use color pencil to finish one of my new fuckery flowers from the new series, which will be coming out this fall. So stay tuned for that. But I'm going to be talking about my toxic planner habits. This is something I brought up in multiple recent videos, and many of you asked me to expand on them. So today I'll be doing that. But before I get into those, I want to just tell you a little bit about what I am doing here in this time lapse. So my fuckery flowers are a series of paintings of mostly realistic, semi-realistic flowers with naughty words hidden inside of them. This will be my third series. There's two series already out for a total of 24 paintings. Another 12 are coming out this fall. The paper that I'm using is is Reeves BFK printmaking paper, 280 GSM. I like it better than using watercolor paper because I do use a lot of colored pencil as well. This paper both holds up to the watercolor that I use on it, plus it, I'm able to use enough colored pencil without overworking it. It also has a nice soft texture, slightly toothy, not too much, which makes the colored pencil parts a lot easier. I use other kinds of watercolor paper as well, but this is what I prefer to use for this particular style of painting. This particular painting is Golden Yarrow. When I make these paintings, the part that I did off camera was the initial sketch, which I do with an erasable colored pencil and a kneaded eraser so I don't mess up the tooth of the paper too much. Right now I am putting in my watercolor base layers and I use the watercolors on my professional palette, which is a mixture of Holbein and Winsor & Newton professional grade paints. And then when I get to the colored pencils, I will be using Prismacolor soft core pencils, except in case I use any white. I don't know if I used any white in this or not. I use the Holbein white because I find it to be a little brighter than the Prismacolor, but I find that the Prismacolor soft core pencils work the best for my particular style without being overly, ex they're still pricey, but they're not overly expensive for my budget. Anyway, now that we've talked about the painting, let's get into my five toxic planner habits. Toxic to me. These may not be toxic to you, but they're toxic to me. The first one is the one I've talked about quite a bit recently, and that is not using my planner when I am super busy and overwhelmed. I have no idea why this happens. This does happen to me on a, a semi-regular basis. I don't know if it's the decorating or... Maybe it's because my planner is usually living in my basement. Maybe it's because I think I can rely on my memory, which is absolutely not the case. But even before I had kidney brain fog from going into kidney failure, I've been an absent-minded professor. Like, it is ludicrous that I would ever think I could rely on just my memory. Seriously, I almost missed a therapy appointment this week because I wasn't looking at my planner. And on top of that, sometimes I think I can just rely on my Google Calendar, which has family events and certain work events, but it doesn't have anything of the things I have to do, like the stuff I have to plan. I can even maybe survive with just my Google Calendar to get me through all of the places I'm supposed to be or the things like dialysis, which is on a Google Calendar. But when it comes to like the shit I have to do, like my to-do list, the items that keep the world going. I don't keep those on my Google Calendar. I've actually tried blocking my entire day out on a Google Calendar and it doesn't fucking work for me. I need it to kind of give me the baseline of my schedule, but I need to either write or maybe use Notion. But even that with using Notion for work seems to be working, but not for personal life. That's just not the way I tend to roll. So I don't understand why I keep doing this. That's why it's my toxic habit. It's something that happens to me a few times a year at the very least. And the more stressed and overwhelmed I am, the higher the likelihood that this is going to happen. Now, what I find most ridiculous about this particular trait is that the times when I wind up not using my planner are the times when it could help me the most. Stressed and overwhelmed, get it all out on paper and then just start knocking things off. But somehow I don't do that. I don't know what the answer to this is. I'm trying by bringing my planner upstairs with me and trying to like remind myself to just get my hands on it at least once in the morning and at least once in the evening. I'm trying those things. This is something I've done before, but like it's one of those things that even before I joined the planner community back when I would just use a mead planner that I could find or when I was trying to make my own before I discovered the whole world of planner world on the internet. I would do this. I would have a system that was working. And then as soon as I got hella overwhelmed, I would ignore it. And so maybe I just don't have the right system, but that doesn't feel right to me either. I think 
I think I just, I run, I put my head in the sand. That's been something that has been a natural habit for me for many, many years is sticking my head in the sand when I am stressed out about something or when I don't know. Here's a secret for you. I don't know. Raise your hand in the comments if you're one of the people who does this. But even now, to this day, when we're not having the kind of money problems I was having many years ago in my adult life or in my teenager life, when I would get a bill, even if I have the money to pay it, I shove it under a pile of other like mail because I just don't want to look at it. It is like the bills version of sticking your head in the sand. So I would say that of all of my toxic planner habits, that's the one that I think has the most impact on like my day-to-day life. It's one of those habits that if I fall into it, it will actively make my life harder. My life is easier and better when I use my planner. So that's what I guess I have to keep in front of my mind whenever I get into one of these, these ruts. The rest of them are not quite as crucial to my day-to-day life, but they still make me feel kind of crappy about myself sometimes. So let's get into those. Number two, letting one day, like one bad day, one day off derail me. I didn't used to do this. If I have a bad, and I have a lot of bad days, I'm in kidney failure. I'm on dialysis. Before I started dialysis, I was having more bad days than good. Uh, so when I, when I have a bad day, I'll just not touch my planner that day and that'll derail me for the rest of the week. Well, if you look at my planner from this year, especially this last quarter where I've been having just all sorts of random shitty days, migraines, um, bad dialysis days, exhausted days, burned out days, most of my weeks are okay for the first few days. And then I have a bad day and the rest of the week is empty and I try again the next week. It didn't used to be like this. Back in my early Erin Condren days, especially, I was having a lot of fun, maybe not fun because I had a bad day to necessitate this, but my way of coping was to skip, like just to not mess with the day and then to go and write in gigantic letters, migraine or whatever else happened to derail me that day and then get back on the horse. And somehow in the last couple of years, that has become less and less of my way of dealing with it. And instead, I just let the whole week go to shit, which then again, like I said, in the previous toxic habit makes my life a lot harder. So I'm not this is not really a video where I'm giving you solutions. I'm just sort of confessing to them. But I feel like this kind of goes back to the first one of keeping the habit of touching my planner once or twice a day. And even if I have a bad day, just write fucking migraine or shitty dialysis day and move on with my life. Number three is introducing too many new elements at once. And I would love to know, I guess with any of these, let me know in the comments if you can identify with them. But this one, I can fucking point some of your asses out on Instagram. Being really excited about something and then bringing all the new things in. Like instead of changing one thing about your planner system, adding one thing new, trying one new style of sticker, trying one new kind of pen, you go all fucking out and you buy all the things and get overwhelmed. I don't do this as much anymore because I'm on a no buy this year, thankfully. (laughs) But in the past, this has kind of been uh, something that I have found myself doing and then found myself regretting. It doesn't always happen, like I said. But every once in a while, I will just overhaul everything or I will decide I want to try something new and then I try all the new things. And that it can super derail me. So introducing too many new things at once and overwhelming myself is one of my not super prevalent habits right now, but it has been one in the past. And as soon as I'm done with my no buy, I'm hoping I will have reset my shopping habits to keep me from doing that. But it may always rear its ugly hand again. Head, hand, head, whatever. I've restarted this voiceover like 25 times. I'm not doing it again. Number four is buying shit I know I will likely not use, but I still think I might stencils. I'm looking at you. The Moxie Life little stencil ruler and the ones that Chrissy Ann Designs made with KDK plans. I was like, fuck, those look so cool. I know I don't use stencils. I fucking know I don't use them. So I didn't buy that one in part because of my no buy, but also in part because I talked myself out of it. But there are multiple times where I buy things that I think I'm going to use, whether they are super fancy decorative stickers with people's faces on them, even though I hate putting people's faces in my planner because it gives me the creeps or stencils or maybe with art supplies being watercolors, despite the fact that I really love the ones I use and I have a couple of other palettes I like to use. So it's like, what am I going to do with the rest of them? (laughs) But I still do this. Again, this is another one that is not really prevalent right now because I am on a no buy, but it is one of the reasons I went on my no buy. Like one of the unspoken reasons was this idea of going 
to Michael's. For me, this has never been really an online thing as much as it's been an in-person thing. Going to Michael's, buying a couple bags of shit that I probably won't use, but I think I might use. And then I don't even take it out of the bags for like a month. That's a terrible habit to be in. And that's something I am definitely, my wallet is very glad that I'm not doing that this year. Although I was doing it with a few home decor things, which is why I'm currently on a freeze from buying home decor things in the month of June as well. And then lastly, my final one, and this is one that, again, goes along with the first two, but also is really, really, I'm looking at my Sterling Ink Planner right now and how I've neglected the shit out of it. More on that in an upcoming video. And that's making spreads that I think I'm going to use and then never using them again. If you followed me for years with my other bullet journals, there are spreads that I have made that I have sworn I was going to use and then I didn't and then I did it again and then I didn't use it. And people will be calling me in the comments like saying, Cindy, you said you weren't going to use this. Don't do it again. I would even say, I'm not making this spread this month because I won't use it. And then I'll do it the next month and people will be like, are you fucking joking? So that has been a long time habit of mine. It's not that I've ever made spreads just for the gram. I make them because I honestly think I'm going to use them and then I don't. And then I get to the next month and I'm like, okay, this month is going to be the month. And then it's not. I need to just admit to myself sometimes that sometimes those are just not spreads that I am using these days. It's, <laughs> it's really sometimes a little difficult to rein myself in when I have the best intentions. I get so excited about something and then the real reality of me kind of <laughs> throws cold water on it. That's kind of both of these last ones, maybe even the last two before this, this whole idea of like, well, if I buy this, I'm going to use it. Are you really? Are you really? I'm going to make this spread. I swear this time is going to be the time I use it. Are you really, are you really going to use it? It's a question, I guess. I need like, do you really need that? And are you really going to use that? Those are like the questions I need to keep asking myself, but apparently I don't. It's funny. I wrote this out while I was on dialysis to be able to kind of talk through these things. And I didn't even realize, even when I was writing it, until I started talking about it to you, the themes I see here, the themes of kind of like when when you're trying to eat, I'm in a place right now where I get hungrier than my stomach capacity can handle because my kidneys push so hard on my stomach and how quickly I get nauseous, but I'm still starving. It's that whole idea of your eyes being bigger than your stomach. Well, apparently my planner eyes are bigger than my planner reality a lot of the time. And that honestly can cover about half of this at the very least. And then there's the other half of me that I guess maybe it's self-sabotaging. Like I stick my head in the sand when I'm really overwhelmed, even though knowing using my planner could actually help me out. Maybe those are my takeaways from this video. I'd love to know from you in the comments what your toxic planner habits are and maybe what your takeaways are from my toxic planner habits. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, my friends, peace.